Hello everybody and welcome back. Thank you very much for joining me. My name is Deborah Hatswell and you're listening to BBR Investigations. Hello everybody. Thank you for joining me this week. I have an amazing guest for you. You're going to be really pleased. I've got Kenny Thibodeau from America and he's talking today about the dogman subject but also something that equates to me. I've been trying to collect data for as many years as I can remember because like yourself Penna, um, you've got a real interest in the subject and there's a lot of information out there isn't there that, that we don't tend to hear a lot about in the UK unless that you, unless you are really really into the subject so a lot of our listeners tonight will be from the UK so if you could tell us where it started for you, Penny, that would be amazing. Yeah, no, definitely. That's uh, I'm very glad to, as I said, uh, be on your show, and I appreciate the opportunity, especially uh, being in here in America. So um, I'm actually up in the Northeast, so um, I'm near like Boston and um, the C Canadian line. So, um, no, long story short, is I used to, when I was in high school, sneak down to the library when I was supposed to be doing homework and stuff, and I would just find myself uh, reading uh, books and things about Bigfoot and some of the Loch Ness monsters, just some of the more, um, I guess, well-known cryptids. And I mean, I'm I was like 11 teen at that point in time, so I always uh, really found that to be interesting. But um, over the past maybe 15 years or so, um, I feel like the scientific community has really stepped forward into the whole Sasquatch and uh, Bigfoot epidemic and they've been able to really bring uh credibility to it with uh dermal ridges like fingerprints um you know like you've had uh jeff meldrum who's been able to uh dictate like the pressure points of when this thing was uh, stepping down so i i feel like it's got a lot of credibility now where someone such as myself uh no knock on myself but i'm just a graphics designer and videographer um and a journalist so when it comes to scientific stuff Unfortunately, the community uh, in that realm doesn't really care what I have to say. So it's, yeah, it's super important to try to get someone like uh, some of those scientific people just to sit down and um, try to at least, I cannot 100% say whether or not a dog man is real. Um, I'm very subjective and objective. I uh, consider myself to be scientific and intellectual. So I try to look at uh, three sides of the story. Mm -hmm. um, I do believe people are definitely seeing something um, that is 100% sure. But as I said, I can't verify what it is that they're seeing. I personally have never seen any of these and I have uh, never been in a situation to have an interaction. But I do think as a journalist and a researcher, it's just really my goal to document and um, just try to put everything together in a simple format so that people are easily able to access it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I've seen it from from the other point of view. I've been doing this for 40 years now. So 30 years ago, I don't think they'd have even heard of Bigfoot in the UK. It just wasn't. Yeah, yes. Lot it, it, yep. A lot of nest monster, yeah, we knew about that. Um, but nothing really of the two-legged variety, to be honest. So like yourself, I just hit the library when I was a teenager and just tried to find a hominid or something along the hominid line that would account for for what I saw, but over the years as I've researched, I realised that there were there are people out there collecting data, very scientific data. There's a lot of work gone into it, but only with the Bigfoot subject. Yes. Now, the dog man is a whole subject to get, and just like yourself, I don't know what they are, Kenny. I only speak to the witnesses. I haven't seen Yes, them exactly, exactly. But we should be investigating those cases in the same way as we do Bigfoot. We should be looking for hair samples. Yes, but, yes. You know, things that can take us forward in the community because there are probably, I can't think of anybody, any scientific individual or body that's actually done any work into the dogman subject uh, yes 100 percent. so that's really why i've tried to uh, just reach out to uh, people such as yourself and i'm just trying to get like a good core of individuals around me that um we can bounce stuff back and forth and try to uh, debunk things and uh like i have a whole whole folder it's like 192 pictures right now that um i haven't been able to debunk or the people that i'm working with Mm -hmm. But um, we also do have a fakes album where uh, Jody Cook, who is uh, one of my right hand men, and I'm one of his, he actually runs the North American Dogman Project. Uh, and then my friend Shane Michael Crisp and then Ryan Thanks. Trembley, uh, people like that I'm able to reach out to, which is excellent. My friend Nuxium. So 
he's a master tracker. So I can send these things out and we kind of filter through to try to figure out. Um, obviously, you know, we all get bamboozled. There probably is a couple pictures in the evidence file right now that are not real, um, that have yet to be debunked, but that's the point of it. So yeah, um, I definitely would love to um, try to share all that stuff with you. And if you do ever have witnesses that um, want to also speak outside of your show, um, I at the moment have three uh, eyewitness testimonies where they were able to send me their story in a voicemail. And what I did is I put it together into a visual aspect. I'll actually send that to you as well yeah. and just be able to tell their story. So um, it's super, super important. And as you said, just making sure that, uh, man, I have so many footprints, um, things like that. But the problem is uh, it's, <laughs> I'm not a master tracker. So when I see these sometimes, I'm like, well, that's a large print. I send it to my buddy and he's like, see how there's no claws there? That most likely is a large cat because the cat's claws <laughs> retract. Yeah. Uh, and then I, someone else sends me a big print. I'm like, well, this looks canine. I send it to my buddy. He's like, yeah, that's actually a coyote. Um, and they enlarge the print. And then he shows me the original print. So I'm like, okay. And it's, it's fine. Um, that's that's the goal as to what we're supposed to be doing anyhow is kind of filtering through that. But it's just unfortunate when you would like to present yourself um, with credible stuff and then you send somebody something, they're like, oh, well, that's actually been debunked. And that's kind of the job that we should be doing. Yeah, you just have to kind of like, as we say in, in England, just take it with a bit of sugar. It's going to happen. So yes. I, I'm the same. I get sent all kinds. of. You'd be amazed how many pictures of poo that I actually get sent quite often, all of the time. Um, and I remember an old story from many years ago. Peter Byrne was a very famous uh, cryptozoologist. Yep. And um, him and his backer paid uh, quite a lot of money back in the day, about £4,000, to stake out this area because they decided that it was an actual Sasquatch toilet out yep. out, whatever you yep. want to call it. So they did that and they stuck, staked it out for about 12 months. Um, and one day this little tracker, uh, a meshish Canadian tracker, comes walking down with his horse, goes up to the tree, does what he needs to do and off he goes again. So they'd watched that tree for 12 months and it was just this guy going about his, his seasonal route you know as he did so th there are always going to be situations like that aren't there? and we can laugh about it now but i bet they were yeah like and and as you said it's always i've i've touched this story a couple times because it's one of the more eccentric ones i've heard um but a friend of mine had somebody he interviewed one time where they said they raised a dog man as a pet and ended up dying and that gentleman's like crying to my friend as he's talking to him it's we don't ever call you out but after the phone call is hung up we're like, yeah, this one's probably not going in the database just because, um, you know, it just that sounds a little bit more off the topic than what I'm trying to present with myself. But it is it's important, like I said, just to try to get a feel of people. Um, yeah. And I have some friends that are uh, former law enforcement and things like that. And I've always found it interesting with how like people at like the FBI and detectives are able to solve stuff. So I've kind of always had like a little bit of that in my yeah. in my mind frame. But. When you when you're interviewing someone, I mean, we all have things in our past, so it's not necessarily that. But at the moment, if you were drinking or do you have, uh, you know, some sort of uh, mental uh, lapse that happened where you off your medication, uh, th just things that you want to try to in your head. You know, it's not necessarily questions you're asking the individual, but as you're documenting something, you're trying to judge body language. And, and you should have already done your research a little bit of who the individual is. Um, before you give them a platform on your platform, I guess. It's hard, isn't it? You walk in a, a really tr tricky line because you, for me, I want to include as much information as I yes. can. But you've got to, you've got to read, you know, like kind of read really deep into it and see, you know, there's certain questions that I'll ask. And like you say, if you know law enforcement, there are certain techniques that they use when they're interviewing, as do FBI behavioralists. So you can kind of, I kind of play off that a little bit. Yes, so, yes. You know, Body so language you can... and, and, and digging over words. And um, I mean, let, let's give it an example. If you and I were out researching, okay, or well, let's say you and I went to here, uh, hockey and football is a big thing, NFL. Well, I'm a big hockey guy. So say you and I went to a, a hockey game and my favorite player is playing and they win the Stanley Cup. I'm like, yeah, that's a huge moment. Okay, well, what if you and I are out 
in the woods and you have an interaction with a grizzly bear, a wolf, mm -hmm. a dog, man, you're going to remember those type of things. And, and I just feel like sometimes when people are speaking, <laughs> they'll just be like, well, um, it was, it was between 64, 65, or it was a uh, late spring ish. Like you just, I don't know. I feel like they're digging. Like it should kind of come out. I slow. mean, yeah, yeah, just slow out. You shouldn't be like, well, when it showed up, it smelled, um, 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 you should just be able to be like, yeah, it smelled like wet dog blood. It just, it was a very unpredictable odor. Just, you know what I mean? You shouldn't have to dig, dig yeah. through your brain to come up with the answer to the question that's presented to you. Yeah. I just, I don't remember a smell, you know, that's it. It's a, a really yes. honest answer. Yes. Someone once asked me, the creature that I saw, what its ears looked like, and I said, I don't remember. I don't remember what its ears looked like. I don't know. And, it, and that's I, totally that's totally fine, and that's why it's super important to, to speak to a witness uh, the sooner something happens, because whether we as humans want to believe it or not, it's a documented mm -hmm. thing that as time goes by, we, we create prefabricated memories. So the general consensus of what happened to you is going to be the same but your mind's going to plug in a little bit of different stuff that's happened. Yeah. And as time proceeds, more and more stuff's kind of getting plugged in. So if you were able to rewind yourself to that exact instant and then put yourself to the future as to what you're thinking you saw, you're going to be like, okay, there's some, some differential. So it's, yeah, it's super key to talk to people when it's fresh. It's not, it's not bad to talk to somebody that had an experience 30 years ago. It's just better to get it as it's fresh. No, I know what you mean. <clears throat> it would be the same if it was a crime. So 100%, still, yes. Yeah, you still interviewed the witness from 30 years ago, but what you're hoping for is some current information. Yes. The, last, the last case I worked, and I'm going to send it over to you when we finish speaking, was an 88-year-old man. It happened on the 8th of September this year. And we were able to, um, to, fortunately for us, this is an area where there's been ongoing activity for about 20 years. And this guy's been documenting it and he's kept it to himself, um, one of the guys on the property. But this chance 88 and he's seen something at the window unfortunately we managed to some people might say it was the wrong thing to do but he wanted to do it he wanted to go on camera yep. and tell people what had happened because while he was still shaping up about it yes that's the best time to get the meat because what? he remembered 100%. you know he remembered that even the fact that the ears were slightly bent yes over. yes it just it's everything and yeah yeah that's, no that's super that's super important and also I do feel like with some of the um, elder generations, it wasn't really a, a topic that people would like to speak about back then. So yeah. those individuals have way more to lose in regards of um, credibility in their mind and things like that. So for someone like that to tell you about that interaction, it, it, it brings some merit to the topic. And also it is so important to sit down and again, I'm not going to call anybody out, but there's just been so many times where people reach out and they claim that they have images, they send it to you, et cetera. But then you ask like, Hey, can we sit down and talk? They don't want to talk to you, which is cool. Um, mm -hmm. but they don't even want to give you your, their story. And it, it, it's hard because we can document your story without the precise location of your house. If you live in Gorham, Maine, I can say you're in Portland, Maine. It's, it's a pretty close differential. We don't need your exact name, but you know, time of day, the location, what county, things like that are super important. And if you're not willing to sit down and, and give that proper information, it's just a lot of red flags. It just gives, yeah. you, gives you a ton of wiggle room to make up your own stuff because uh, no one else is on your property, etc. So it's, it's super tough because you, you don't want to invade people's privacy, which is totally understandable. But at the same time, that's kind of the point of being a researcher is to be able to document that um, so yeah. that if someone is in these locations, uh, my Jody Cook made a map um, yeah. on Google yeah. Maps that shows literally every dog man um, encounter that has been documented and you can go through. And so that's what I did is I went through all these regions that are mm -hmm. dog man territory and I look at current events, past events where people are going missing in these areas. And when there isn't an explanation as to why they went missing or witnesses say they saw a bear man or a wolf man carrying yeah. somebody off, then, you know, that's what I'm trying to document in regards of that. So it's, it's, it's just imperative to get that because if not, I, I can't just go off someone's total word because you would like to think that human testimony is great, but in actuality, it's it, yeah. 
it's yeah. really not as credible as we think it is, you know. I'm about to make your day then, Kenna. Um, I started mapping cryptid accounts in 1982. Heck yeah. Yeah, I started with a big map on the wall in my bedroom. And I'd find one and I'd stick a pin in it and I'd write everything down. Yes. And then I've, I've continuously done that um, and I still do it now. And it, that's turned into a Google map. It's an interactive map that's on Google. I share that's it great. with you. That's great. Yes. So See, when that's I need so perfect. something, I just pop it on. I put all the details. If they sent me any photographs, I pop those photographs on. That's it's so big now, though, that what I've had to kind of direct it through my website because it only holds so much data, doesn't it? But it's still but all, I, it's all there, though, still, which is great. So that means you're documented and you have it. That That's excellent. That's it. And then what I found is there's nobody actually documenting between us. So you've got the Americans, the Canadians, the Russians, and the UK. But then yeah. you've got all of Europe, no one's kind of documenting that. So I started doing that now. That's so actually, I managed, yeah, I managed to get witnesses from other parts of the world. But that's the, the, the whole point. And if I pop my clogs tomorrow, my work's still there. It can still carry on. People can just keep adding to it, you know? That, yes, and, and that's what I'm doing with uh, the digital book. Um, I mean, at some point it can be printed, but that way I'm able to just consistently update it. Like uh, later tonight, I got maybe a couple more hours of updating stuff in there. And then I need to finish up a, a video of a friend's podcast that we were working on and stuff like that. But it's, uh, yeah, that's key. It's just being digital format now is great. So, I mean, I don't need to keep the paper copy. If I want it, I can print that out. I could just yeah. bust open Google documents and everything is like right there, which is totally excellent. Um, but uh, back to what you were saying, you folks over there actually have, I don't know if you ever heard of the Flixton werewolf. That's actually one of the um, original mm -hmm. uh, werewolves and also the wolf of uh, Thumberland and Allendale, um, the black yeah. wolf that was back. I don't want to throw total dates out because I have them documented in my book, but I don't like to throw incorrect dates, but you know what I'm speaking. No, about. I know. I've, I've worked both of those cases. So okay, cool. Know. Sweet. So, all right. But uh, yeah, no, those, those are just some of um, the smaller ones. And I mean, even, uh, I believe it's the Black Mountains and the movie of American Werewolf in London where the pub is, The Slaughtered Lamb. That's actually based off a real pub that was near uh, the Black Mountains and the Moors where people in that area were reportedly seeing bipedal upright dog creatures. And, Do, you know where... uh... <laughs> Do you know where I live? No. Oh, that's where I live. That's the Pe West Pennine Moors. I live on the west part. Wow. Okay. Okay. Cool. It was on the east. So, so what is, you... that, is that a true story then from what I understand? Like I've been told from a couple different people that that was uh, based off the American World in London thing. But uh, since you're over there, that's great. We've had reports of of, um, of werewolves, wolfmen, wolvers, depending on what name you give them, from yes. about the first century. But American Werewolf in London was kind of based on RF, RAF Alcumbra, which is um, a net, um, um, an RAF base, an American RAF base that was in the centre, more or less the centre of the UK. Uh, and you had American soldiers that were reporting seeing what they called the standing wolf. And that went yep. on for 30 years. But on the northeast coast that you mentioned, Flixton, most of the northeast coast, the sightings along that coast are canine in description, not yes. only two legs, snout. And it's also an area where most of our military bases are, because when we were at war with Germany, that was the side of our country where we had our installations and batteries and things like that. So there's a lot of talk at the moment about is there a, 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 any kind of connection between these dark-headed men and the military bases that they're being seen on. So I think the last report I took from the northeast coast where you're talking Flixton would have been last year, two ladies out walking dogs. Um, and they were there at the, the ben, RAF Bempton, this one's called. Uh, yeah, no, that's you got a lot of stuff right there. Also, uh, Shetland, Scotland, uh, recently someone sent me a pretty creepy uh, vocalization where they're looking out their window. And um, it definitely right. doesn't sound like a canine that I know. And they're in like a small little village. And it just sounds mm. like a human and uh, a, uh, like a wolf screaming. And uh, it's pretty... It's pretty creepy. So, yeah, no. And also uh, the Beast of uh, Guandavian. I, I, I'm not sure if I said that correct, but in Germany. Oh, yeah, the French. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was a case with the American soldiers where they saw that as well. So um, I do know from my research that, that there are three different type of dogmen, um, type one, type two, and mm -hmm. type three. So your type one is uh, more traditionally uh, what you would see from like the howling and yeah. uh, 
Van Helsing, your more traditional werewolf, where the color can range a little bit between dark gray, black, and brown, but they have the ears pointed up at the top of their head. Uh, eyes can be amber, orange, to red. A couple cases where people have said yellow, but it could have been the reflection from something yeah. else. And then you have your type two dog man that is similar in regards of being upright bipedal with like a raccoon type like hands and arms, but it's mm -hmm. got a German shepherd head and German shepherd coloring. And then your type three is the uh, same thing, bipedal upright, but it's got the look of a hyena. And those ones have the specific eye shine at night that is uh, different mm -hmm. from the type one and type two. So people that are a little bit more experienced or a seasoned uh, researcher can uh, kind of pick up on the differentials between the eye shines. Um, so my theory on it is, again, I'm just a researcher. Um, I do believe that they they are flesh and blood. Um, this is, as I said, my my view yeah. on it because there are footprints that are left behind. People, so There's claw marks on people's houses. They've been seen eating. They've been seen yeah. drinking water. Uh, they've been seen Let's living see. in dens. Uh, mm -hmm. They howl um they have caused injury to people um i've actually talked to a couple people that have shot it and it reacted it did not like what <laughs> what hit it um and a lot of people don't realize that the united states especially down in like kentucky and tennessee there's a whole entire um, mountain range and tunnel system that runs underneath that called the mammoth uh, cave system and a lot of researchers uh think that um, the dog man and things like that, or they just use these to like uh, get back and forth, which would make sense with any animal. I mean, any animal is going to use ways to like go back and forth, but there have been a ton of people that have seen dog men dens that go pretty deep into the ground. And I mean, there's numerous sources of animals that do that. I mean, a fox, for example, might not completely travel under the ground, but it digs its burrow and it has other entrances and stuff like that. So yeah. Um, and they're smart. Animals are smart. So they won't do anything that ex extends calories without having to. No. Yes, it's funny you said that because uh, predators are hypochondriacs, uh, meaning that they're terrified to be injured because um, if you are a predator, you are usually solo. Not always. I mean, if you are in a wolf pack, you know, hopefully your other buddies bring you food. But if you uh, are a deer or something and you get injured, you can, you know, lay down and eat some grass and have a better chance of survival. But if you're a wolf, or a grizzly bear in your solo and you busted up your front leg or something, um, you have a very slimmer chance of survival now. So um, as you said, that they usually never put themselves in a situation yeah. unless they know that they're going to be successful. It's like a great white shark. If you notice, they usually don't ever hit you straight on. It's either from underneath or behind because yeah. they don't, they're trying to protect themselves. Um, yeah, exactly that. Yeah, they don't make themselves vulnerable, do the animals? That's not what they do. So yes, you, you talk, you're talking about something that's, it's highly intelligent a master of its own survive like yes. its own environment you know it knows how to use light and shade to kind of camouflage itself yes, yes. moving at extreme speed um and a lot of people say i saw it out the corner of my eye well it's like with anything i mean so people too are like oh how come you don't get a good picture all right so i have a pet squirrel she comes in and chills with me in here too but she's outside playing like right now okay if i go to pick my phone up right now as i see her she's looking in at me but is she going to stand there the whole time and like, let me get a perfect picture of her? Maybe it's like the bird outside. Oh, cool. Hey, look at this woodpecker. You pull it up and then it starts to move away. And you're like, dude, this picture looks like crap. And it was from like six feet away. And so when people are like, Oh, well, what's up with all the blurry photos and things like that? It's, it, I mean, when you have someone that gets this epic, perfect, like national geographic photo, you know how long it took that person to sit there and get that epic, epic photo so a lot of people don't understand that when people have these encounters, they're not necessarily out there uh, looking for that. I mean, yeah. they could just be out with their family camping and they might have no belief in this whatsoever. So why should we expect them to just have plaster castings to be able to cast this footprint? Why? Yeah. Why do we expect them to all of a sudden have laser sensing where they can pick up thermal imaging? It's, it's not like that. Um, no. But I pushed when it happened to me, Kenna, when I saw something, I didn't think about a camera, I didn't think anything else other yeah. than foot, 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 run, and I pushed my friend to the ground. And yeah. she, you know, it primarily, no thought into it, but afterwards realized I'd done it so it'd get her and not me. If I'd have had a camera, it wouldn't have mattered. I'd have thrown it and run. 
Well, yeah, what are you going to take a selfie with a dog, man? I mean, that's what, <laughs> that, 100%. I mean, how many times do people, if a tiger is coming at you, I mean, every once in a while you have somebody in the back of the car that had their camera going that catches it, <laughs> a, but the guy that's in the front's like, oh boy, like he's just yeah, trying to, that, yeah, get at it. It's not realistic, is it? It's not realistic. I spoke to a guy in um, Edmonton, Slave Lake, and yep. he saw a Sasquatch and a moose going at it head to head, and he had a rifle. And he hunts for a living, he's a bear guide, and he said he didn't even think about his gun. It never entered his head to rack his... He just went backwards as quietly as he could because Trauma. primarily his brain yes. told him that was the best action to take. Yeah, you know? fight, fight or flight. Um, it's, yeah. I mean, there's so many war cases about that where people, you, you, you traumatize and literally there's bombs blowing up, everyone's shooting around you, and you're just standing there like not... Just, yeah. yeah, yeah, not processing fully what, what's occurring to you. And no, that's... It's super true. So that's another thing you say with them being intellectual. There's a numerous cases of uh, them like setting traps that I've heard, like leaving uh, dead animals on the road. So where someone will get out and look at it and be like, what the heck? Um, they tried door handles, uh, windows. There's actually a really creepy case from the 80s in Germantown, Ohio, where the police came down on a loudspeaker and told everyone, uh, local residents, to please get a step back inside. Some of the wolves uh, from the local natural resource center have escaped, which, okay, I mean, it's it's an environmental place. These wolves see people all the time. So, I mean, okay, but whatever. So they, they obeyed the police and went inside. And all throughout the night and up to this point, to this day, uh, people reported uh, hearing strange howling. They had uh, reports of large wolf-like German shepherd-like heads looking in their windows with the red eyes, trying their door yeah. handles. And this is the eighties where people don't have cell phones. So yeah. you, you might not like necessarily have spoken to the other person on the uh, side of town that day, but yet all you people are seeing and hearing like what <laughs> has occurred with that. And it's a, uh, it's super creepy in regards to that. And I think a lot of people, uh miss the aspect when they're like well why aren't there more accounts there actually are a ton of accounts but people also need to realize when you have an account with an apex predator you're very lucky uh to come out of it on mm -hmm. top um people are way more apt to have a chance of survival with a sasquatch because um yeah. from all the yeah. native americans that i've spoke to and th that are friends of mine they obviously are going to push you out of the area but they're not going they're not there to kill you and hunt you they're they're protectors of the forest if you are being destructive cutting down the land polluting yeah sure you might have a negative interaction but even with the eighth canyon they never really tried to kill the hunters they put they were trying to push them yeah, out, yeah. out of the area whereas dogmen 100 percent are looking at you as an opportunity for dinner or you're not going to have um, a very positive reaction so some of the interactions with the younger children where the dogman has taken them away like one of the girls uh her name was Ida, and it's an older story that you'll be able to read in my book. But when they found her, they asked why she wasn't screaming for help and things like that. They actually found her in a strange animal den. And as they approached it, a large bear-like wolf thing bolted out and went running by them. And they asked this little girl, like, why are you in here? Like, what, what's going on? And she said, Mr. Wolf wouldn't allow me to scream for help. Mr. Wolf was uh, feeding me berries and Mr. Wolf got mad at me when I said I wanted to go home and he bit my hat off my head. So I have a theory about that. I almost feel like they're like those dogmen aren't doing that as a way to be nice. They're doing that as a way to as dark as it sounds, prepare, uh -huh. pre prepare you to consume you like uh, like the whole little Red Riding Hood kind of like aspect. Gretel and Gretel, like feel your finger and see if you're spattening her up. Yes, yes. So I, I just, yeah, one, that's that's just my view on it. Um, because all the little kids do say the same thing that they've been taken and that it feeds them, but it's not being like nice to them. It, it's almost like, it, like as dark as it sounds, like when you are cooking on Thanksgiving, putting berries or something in your turkey to add flavor. I, I really feel like that's kind of what's going on with that. But see, I didn't know. Where can people get the book, Kenny? Or should I just give them your email? Um, something? I as soon as so, like I said, it's always going to be uh, being updated. But I will send you a PDF file directly um, to your uh, Facebook Messenger, so that way you can just open it up and I uh, scan through it. And what I'll do is every couple of weeks, uh, when I go through and update more stuff, I can just send the updated version your way. Oh, and, really? 
that yeah. way you can look through all that stuff and you can see the things that I've been able to document over here. And also if you are able to add anything to uh, the European side, it's great. And also if any of my research and work mm -hmm. is able to help you out as well, then uh, that's kind of the whole point. So, yeah, no, I can do that. That, that. That'd be amazing. And like I say, there's a lot of Brits out there with stories to tell. I find that as I put a new account out, then invariably someone will get in touch with me at that point. And yes, so yes. And that's that's that is excellent because that means you built that rapport of people mm -hmm. feeling like respectable and being able to uh, present themselves to you. So, no, that that's amazing. I'm going to I will definitely 100 percent. You have my word. You you're going to get everything I have. As I said, I'm just trying to <clears throat> excuse me. There's a couple people that are waiting on it. But instead of we're all you guys are all busy instead of bombarding with message message i i just want to present everything so that way you have you can see all the evidence you can see the fakes you can see all the videos i have you'll have my book and then obviously um as things are updated then i can send you more things and i'll even send you um a bunch of my art for the dog man if you want to use it or whatever you'd like to do with that as well and if you need art or images cleaned up um i do specialize in that so if you get a print of something and you want it to pop out a little bit more i'm able to do all that stuff too yeah that's really kind of you is, is there any cases could you because the listeners will want to know is there any cases that you've worked on that this this is a personal question for me where you would have liked to have been there like a fly on the wall yeah actually recently um that's funny you said that there was a case at the end of august in uh, bethel maine which is uh, near sugarloaf so it's maybe an hour or so away from where i am right now um there was a 15 year old boy from massachusetts that was up here with a survivalist group and um that's what they specialize in outdoor mm -hmm. survival they're camping and um they're about 30 miles into the woods and around 3 15 in the morning the kid gets up to go use the bathroom and as he gets up uh i did speak to the kid and i also spoke to some of the other members of the group um, um, his parents aren't really about what he said. They think he's making it up kind of. So they grounded him for a while. And actually when I was speaking to them, they're like, Oh, you don't believe in this werewolf stuff. Do you? And I was like, well, it's not that I necessarily believe in it. I just would like to interact yeah. or just hear like what your child has to say. So they were, they were in there too. when I spoke to the kids, so it wasn't necessarily the most fluid uh, conversation, but he, he got, what I, like I said, blindsided by something that felt like he was hit by a linebacker and it was hairy. It smelled like a dog. And he said it looked like a werewolf from a movie from the, what he could see from like a fire in the lights as it was carrying him off. And he's screaming for help. And his uh, tribe leader or group leader stepped out from the tent with the other members that were in charge. And they did hear the kids screaming for help as something was clamoring through the forest um, and you could hear tree branches breaking. And then the kid's voice just was off in the distance. Well, they were looking for him, couldn't find him, and they called in the main game wardens. And I believe it was 15 hours later, they found the kid uh, around a mile or so away from his original abduction site. And he was screaming for help, and the game warden and his dog were able to find him. So they brought him back, and that's what the kid's story uh, is. And there's actually another camper that had nothing to do with any of this uh, that was up in the area that I happen to know and he recorded um, a vocalization of a really strange sounding. I mean, we do, we do have coyotes up here and foxes yeah. and uh, people don't want to admit it, but there are mountain lions up here recently that have been uh, reintroduced and we do have some gray wolves in Northern Maine and stuff, but this, this was strange. It was pretty, it was pretty quiet and you could just, it just, I don't know, it sounds super strange. So he sent that to me from the area of where this happened with his kid. And um, yeah, no, I mean, he, the kid had nothing to gain from making it up. I mean, he got grounded from the rest of the summer by his parents. So um, I don't think <laughs> that was a good a good flex to get them to be, hey, you're being a good child. But um, yeah, no, I would have liked to definitely be able to uh, get a little bit more of what went on with that because um, yeah. yeah, sounds pretty sounds pretty interesting. And like I said, he he was definitely traumatized about it. And I got to speak to him uh in a pretty good time frame from when it had originally occurred so i think if they can tell that you're actually interested in listening you get a lot more out of it i mean i've, I've interviewed children with the parents and i've seen the difference and children i spoke to a gentleman only a few months ago and yeah. his son saw a shadow being in the bedroom now instead of saying it was just a nightmare it was this it was that he said to him people do see them son don't know what they are not really sure what they are but he because he believed him it made it a much less traumatic event yes, yes. 
you know, rather than putting it with me, it was, oh, you're being silly, or you're being dramatic, or it's just a nightmare, just go to sleep. And I was plagued as a kid, me. And I think if I'd have had a different set of parents, I'd have navigated it differently. So I'm all That's for, true. like, even if you don't believe your child, your child believes what happened to them. And that's, yes. yeah, that's enough for me. You know, that, that I can well, work. And that's a great way to look at it. And also, that's funny you say that because even though a child is a child and they haven't fully developed yet, when you have a two year old that can barely speak, correct? They yeah. haven't had a chance really to, to learn how to lie. They haven't had a chance to prefabricate things. They haven't had a chance to learn what a werewolf is or any of these things that they are very, they're just using simplified words that they're able to use. So when they, yeah. So when they say that a bear man or Mr. Wolf yeah. took me, I tend to believe that quite credibly because this is, as I said, a little child that isn't, isn't a lot, like doesn't have the capability yet to learn how to lie. And yeah, that's what they're, that's, that's their best description as to what took them so there's not really much wiggle room to have things no. made up whereas if you're 15 or 16 or things like that the odds of lying are definitely way more prevalent you know and just i think i i always took child witnesses because i was a child witness i think yes and a lot, i still see it now where the child can be incredibly detailed they can go back to the area with you do size comparisons and everything yes then you'll still get well they were 15 and they must have been drinking or they must have been on drugs and i think well yes. i you know so i was credible credible enough that you'll listen to the program i'll read my book and this yes. kid is the same position that i'm in you know and it's just for it's hard for me because nothing's changed in that 40 years you know we've come a long way what, what i mean is because it's not an adult when we instantly poo poo it or we instantly dismiss it i've yeah. spoken to people who've had experiences when they were children who've gone on to be very credible very credible adults. So if you believe them in a court of law, I don't understand. I never gained anything, Rikana, from point being the kid that saw a monster. No, of course not. I mean, if anything, you lost stuff about that. I mean, you're gonna get like yeah, made and, and and things like that. Yeah, it's not like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, and that's 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 the huge thing too, as well, is that um, some of the people that do come forward and you see like what they do have for occupations and stuff, it's you're not you're not gaining anything off of that so no that's that's super it's super important because uh for like me i have a photogenic mind but again um everything over time as i said you plug in different things but when i do something whether it's a, a video or a project i start painting it out digitally into my mind yeah. and i'm able to see as it's unfolding and i already have it in my mind how it should look so then i'm putting it into the video form or into the image and, and stuff like that and then trying to translate a story so like yeah. In a, yeah like in an image or a video the goal is to tell a story without oh, not always having to say something so in an image you yeah. don't have to put a voice to it but if you do it correctly that's going to speak volume to the people that view it so um yeah no it's it's just super important with all that yeah for sure well, that's what we'll do then. I'm going to ask all of my listeners to reach out and get in touch with you. Me Thank and you will be back with forwards together, won't we? I'm sure we'll collab again at some point. No, we, de we definitely will. I mean, you're you're invited to my group and stuff, and I have you as a Facebook friend, and uh, yeah. I'm definitely going to be sending you, you know, all my stuff uh, right. and when new stuff comes up. You're you're in my Facebook message as the people that um, are quickly accessible. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, I know what you mean. I'm the same. Yeah, no, I mean, I talked to, like I said, I, I have no problems. I'll speak to everybody, but I do have a really good core of people right now, four or five people that as soon as I open up my messenger, those are the folks that are kind of at the top that I just are tending to look at what they have to say first. And you're actually right up there. So we, we just we just have to keep chipping away. As I say, we just yeah. keep chipping away, collect as much of the data as we can. And we throw lots of it out because it's, you know, we work out what it is, but it's that anomaly, that cool yes. little bit of an anomaly at the end that then we can say, right, we can't explain this. No, we, and it's so know. important, like you said, because unfortunately we we all as humans think that we're here for a prolonged period of time and, and things unfortunately <laughs> happen. Like, I don't know if you ever heard of Linda Godfrey. But yeah, she, yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, she was pretty much like the godmother of uh, the whole dog man thing. And she unfortunately is no longer with us but she documented everything uh, in the books and blogs so 
people like you and I are still able to access that stuff and we're still able to read it. We're still able to document it. And yeah, same, exactly. thing, same thing with me. I'm for, you know, if, like I would like to think I'm kicking around for another 60, 70 years, but Hey, if uh, something does unfortunately happen, well, I put pretty much all my research or that's the final goal out there. So that say something does happen, well, you have access to the things that I've done and it's still not lost. It's able to be built off of. It is. I mean, we've just lost Scott Carpenter. Yeah, so and J.C. Johnson, unfortunately. And, uh, if all of that work hadn't been documented. Yeah, you have Jan Thompson. Uh, Martin Groves, unfortunately, has been having some uh, health issues. I mean, Johnny Henderson. Yeah, no, so there's, like I said, there's just, unfortunately, a ton of people. So it's, uh, it's so good to really be able to interact with these people before things happen. So, like, uh, the whole LBL thing, Jody Cook actually was able to speak to Jan Thompson, was able to speak to the police officers mm. that were involved there. So you now have somebody that was face to face with somebody. But a lot of people don't understand. They're like, well, where are the pictures of Jan? We're talking about 1982, man. Um, yeah. This isn't really like a, a selfie type time error. I mean, yeah, if you're a criminal, you might have an easily accessible image. But um, yeah, no. So. It's, it's just that's very true. That is very true. I work with a lot of TV companies and I'm working with one at the moment and they want to cover the story of when I was 15. Now, my family were poor. I grew up in a mill town. Yep. Um, I said to her, I don't even know if my family's got photographs of me at that age. And I think yes. I was able to find like one when I was about three, one when I was in my early teens. Exactly. Probably because I was going to school and I had my uniform. Well, yeah, because it's in school. Exactly. Now, this day and age, we have we have pictures like out the galore everyone goes to your facebook and you see who you are but that that's the age we're in but like i said back then that's not how it was so when you google to try to see who jan thompson is you're not going to find any images of her because she lived down in kentucky and tennessee in the 80s had no, had no concern about being famous or or there was no things about instagram or facebook yeah, you, you can't plan for it Yes. You, know, you can't think, right, well, you know, in, in 20 years' time, I'm going to be famous. I better get some really good selfies now. Well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, now, sure, like we have images. Oh, yeah, look at it. This is when I was like 11 teen. But, um, <laughs> yeah, you know, back then, it's just not how it was. So she she's a real person. I mean, her, her date of birth, her certificates are there. I mean, her grandfather was a sheriff. You can see the trail. She's yeah. real. You just don't have the image in front of her like you do with you and I or Jody Cook where you put the face to it because it was a different time. But that doesn't discredit any of those people whatsoever. Um, if anything, they were the very first people in that area. And at that time frame, locals don't want that type of stuff getting out. Still to this day, if you and I went down to some of these areas and started trying to ask people about dogmen and they don't know who we are and they see that I was a city slicker or something and I dressed like this, they – they're not necessarily going to want to talk to you because they're, they're going to think that you're trying to make a debacle of them or you're just trying to make some sort of revenue off of real traumas that happen to people. Take and, advantage of them in some way. Yeah. That's, that's what they think. But it's her story to tell. At the end of the day, yes. it's her story to do with as she wishes. Exactly. And that's why it was so so imperative to get that, like to speak to her and have that documented um, because – now, unfortunately, I don't know how familiarized with it, and I know you got to go pretty soon, but there's this gentleman named Roger that came out a few years ago mm -hmm. that claimed he survived the whole LBL thing. And uh, I'm not here to, like I said, diss anybody. Or, um, I just have a lot of holes in his story compared to things that I've been told over the years from like uh, people I know that spoke to Bart Nunley and uh, yeah. all these other individuals that the story's... 100% always almost been the same except for there was a boy and there might have been three family members, just the mother, the father, and the daughter, but over time mm -hmm. there's been the boy. Okay, but besides that, it's all been the same story, but when Roger came out, he said that the dog man had been shot in the tree, he hid underneath the RV, and that the animals didn't kill the family in a in a violent way, which doesn't really make any sense whatsoever because everyone from Jan's story and the deputy said it looked worse than any sort of horror movie that they were yeah, visually, that's what sh told, yeah. they were visually shaken. The door was ripped off by something extremely like strong. And also Roger said that they, when they killed the woman, like it, like it just kind of like laid her down. Any sort of interaction or encounter that I've ever read from whether it's animals or people, 
they're not just going to lay you down and like put this nice little like covering on you. They're going to rip you to pieces, which is what would make sense with the part of Jan and the other deputies that saw yeah. what had gone on. Um, so also again, too, if Roger had really been there, in my opinion only, why did he use three different aliases before he became Roger to talk about the topic? Um, and mm -hmm. also he, again, has never put a face to who he is. You hear his voice, but he was supposed to have done a documentary, uh, three years ago, he said he was, and it has yet to kind of come out. Um, so things again, I'm not here to call anyone a liar. I, oh, don't, I, I get it. I get what you say. You yeah. I don't know the man, but there's just so many holes in the story that someone like me, unfortunately, I can't piece them together. And from the other research I have, it just doesn't add up. So. You see, I mean, that's just it, isn't it? And plus, we're on different, different. I'm in England. You're over there in America. Yes. Uh, the, I will be honest. I don't really know the case at all. All I know is that a family were attacked by dogmen in America at Land Between the Lakes. That's as yep. much as I know on the subject. You see. Well, how so, about this? When you read my uh, book, there you're gonna, <laughs> you'll, you'll get to. I'd like to think, I mean, you seem like a pretty educated individual, but I would like to think after reading that, that uh, hopefully I can teach you some stuff. That, uh, I mean, yeah, this, my, my grandmother taught me a very long time ago, Kenna, that knowledge costs nothing. So you should no. carry it with your own. Oh, yes, take it when people are willing to <laughs> help you help you learn and stuff. So, yeah, no, I actually yeah. cover, um, I've made it as easy as possible where you can look through the regions like Europe, of the northeast and southwest um so on the map the united states everything falls in there but yeah no i have a whole section of the land between the lakes covering kentucky and tennessee mm -hmm. and um i think once you're able to read through that i have a ton of stuff from jan and things and uh i think you'll be i think you'll understand a little bit more as to why i can't wait i cannot wait i love a good read there's, yeah, a, storm going on. there's a storm going on out there i'm That's off for the week I don't know exactly what I'm going to be doing. Yeah, no, I will. I will uh, get it over to you, like I said, as soon as possible. Um, I have some more stuff to actually add in there tonight, and I'm going to be working on um, the other podcast, and then I'm going to be getting yours up on my page and stuff. But I'm actually kind of coming to the point where I am actually getting a little caught up the last month or so. I've been up pretty much like four or five in the morning, just grinding, grinding, because uh, – I don't know. I just had so much knowledge in my head that I don't get it down. I know. I know. Yeah, I didn't realize how far I was down the rabbit hole until every time I moved some dirt, uh, there was more stuff coming. Well, that's that's how it, it's fluid. Your research is fluid. It's never you never yeah. sit still and say, right, I know everything now. Because no, that's what researchers do, that's isn't cool. it? That's what is that? What's that whole saying? Only a fool's positive, right? Right? Yeah, yeah exactly. So cool. Oh, cool. I will definitely be getting you back on for part two. I'm going to ask people if you've got any questions for you as well. Yeah, no, anything. That, yeah, Sorry. that can shoot some questions at you. So, thank you very much for joining me tonight. Thank and you so much. And like I said, anything I can do to help you, and uh, in return, like I said, whether it's just you know anything you need help with, man, spreading knowledge. If you need images, like I said, cleaned up. Anything I can do to help, you've been kind, and uh, oh, yeah. and you're reaching out to try to help with the investigation and stuff. So it's only good to be loyal back. And that's what I'm uh, I'm about. So I consider you a friend and you are a very uh, good individual and a good researcher. So I definitely would like to keep on collaborating and see what we can do for sure. I think so too. So going forward, you'll be hearing more from me and Kenny, no doubt. So Excellent. for everyone that's tuned in this week, thank you very much. I really appreciate your support. Please go and check out my Patreon on my YouTube memberships. I'm going to add links to all of Kenny's things in the description below. You can click on them and go over there. If you've got any questions, you want to reach out to him, I shall make sure that you can get hold of him. Yeah, so my email too is right on my uh, YouTube as well. So if anyone does want to contact me like that, it's right there and I will definitely get back to him for sure. And I shall add that in. So at the same time, same day next week. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Take care. Talk to you soon. Thank you for joining me today and I hope you'll join me for future episodes. I release content like this every week and I'm sure I'll cover a topic you enjoy so don't miss out. Hit that follow or like button. Please check out my YouTube and Patreon memberships for early or exclusive content and you can find the link to them on my social media and donation sites in one handy link tree below. BBR is not funded so any donation no matter how small is highly appreciated. So I will bid you adieu and I will be back at the same time. 
the same day with more from the BBR case files.